digestion in humans, the stomach and intestines. We know that the process of digestion begins in the mouth. The chewed up food mixed with saliva is pushed into the food pipe or the esophagus when we swallow it. The esophagus is a muscle pipe that is about 10 inches or 25 centimeters long. Once food has entered the esophagus, it doesn't just drop right into your stomach. Instead, muscles in the walls of the esophagus move in a wavy way to slowly squeeze the food through the esophagus. This squeezing makes sure the food goes only one way. This squeezing is so important that it has a special name, peristalsis. With all this, it takes about 2 or 3 seconds for the food to reach the stomach. The stomach is attached to the end of the esophagus. It's a stretchy sac shaped like the letter U. It has three important jobs. To store the food you've eaten. To break down the food into a liquidy mixture. To slowly empty that liquidy mixture into the small intestine. The stomach is like a mixer, churning and mashing together all the small balls of food that came down the esophagus into smaller and smaller pieces. It does this with the help from the strong muscles in the walls of the stomach and gastric juices that also come from the stomach's walls. Gastric juice also has acid in it. So, gastric juices also help kill germs that might be in the eaten food. The stomach also secretes a mucus that protects its own muscles from the gastric juices. Inside the stomach, proteins from the food break down into simpler substances. From here, the food goes onwards into the small intestine. The small intestine is a 22 feet long tube. So, it isn't actually small. It is packed inside you beneath your stomach. The small intestine breaks down the food even more. The chicken on your pizza has a lot of protein and the cheese has fat. The small intestine allows three more digestive juices to mix with the food so that it can extract all these things. Do you know which juices mix with the food in the small intestine? Bile is a digestive juice made by the liver. That mixes with the food in the intestine too. The bile helps to absorb fats into the blood. Bile is made in the liver and stored in the gallbladder. The second digestive juice is the pancreatic juice which is made in the pancreas. The pancreas is located just below the stomach. Carbohydrates, fats and proteins get digested because of the pancreatic juice. As the partially digested food reaches the lower part of the small intestine, the intestinal juice which is produced by the intestine mixes with the food. That completes the digestion of the food. 
carbohydrates are broken down into simple sugars such as glucose. Fats are broken down into fatty acids and glycerol. Proteins are broken down into amino acids. Your food may spend as long as 4 hours in the small intestine and will become a very thin watery mixture. It's time well spent because at the end of the journey, the nutrients from your pizza and orange juice can pass from the intestine into the blood. So, digestion is over. Now, for the next process, absorption. The digested food now has to go into the blood. How does that happen? Through the small intestine itself. On the inside walls of the small intestine are thousands of small finger-like things called villi. Villi is the plural of villus. Each villus is filled with blood vessels. These blood vessels are very thin. As the digested food moves around the villi, they absorb it into the blood. This blood filled with nutrients from the small intestine goes to the liver. The liver is a filter which takes out harmful substances from the blood. The liver turns some of the waste into more bile. The liver even helps figure out how many nutrients will go to the rest of the body and how many will stay behind in storage. For example, the liver stores certain vitamins and a type of sugar your body uses for energy. After this, the cells use the nutrients for growth and repair. This is called assimilation. And what happens to the leftover waste? The part of the food that your body can't use goes on to the large intestine. The large intestine is the last stop of the digestive system. It is about 8 cm round and 5 feet long. Just like the small intestine, it is also packed into the body. The large intestine has a tiny tube with a closed end coming off it called the appendix. It's part of the digestive tract, but it doesn't seem to do anything, though it can cause big problems because it sometimes gets infected and needs to be removed. This waste needs to be passed out of the body. Can you guess where it ends up? Well, here's a hint. It goes out with a flush. Before it goes, it passes through the part of the large intestine called the colon, which is where the body gets its last chance to absorb the water and some minerals into the blood. As the water leaves the waste product, what's left gets harder and harder as it keeps moving along until it becomes a solid. Yep, it's poop also called stool or a bowel movement. The large intestine pushes the poop into the rectum, the very last stop on the digestive tract. The solid waste stays here until you are ready to go to the bathroom. When you go to the bathroom, you are getting rid of this solid waste by pushing it through the anus. There's the flush I was talking about. This is called ejection. You can help your digestive system by drinking water 
and eating a healthy diet that includes foods rich in fiber. High fiber foods like fruits, vegetables and whole grains make it easier for poop to pass through your system. The digestive system is a pretty important part of your body. Without it, you couldn't get the nutrients you need to grow properly and stay healthy. And next time you sit down to lunch, you'll know where your food goes from start to finish. Did you know what happens when you vomit? Well, the food comes back up the stomach and out of your mouth. Peristalsis that pushes the food up and out, only this time it works in the opposite direction. Also, the food tastes quite different from when you ate it. That's because it is half digested food mixed with spit, slimy stomach mucus and other stomach juices. You may vomit if you have some bad bacteria or viruses in your stomach or intestines. Your body wants to get rid of them the fastest way it knows how, puking. Sometimes people are sick if they are nervous, traveling or go on a fast ride in a theme park. When you are about to vomit, your body produces more saliva. This helps to protect your teeth from stomach acid. Your brain sends a message to your diaphragm, stomach muscles and intestine muscles saying get rid of that food. The muscles in your stomach and intestine push food towards your mouth instead of down towards your intestines. The bad smell is due to stomach acids and bile. When you puke, bile can come up along with the half digested food. It smells pretty bad. What did we just learn? The esophagus connects the mouth to the stomach. Gastric juices in the stomach help to kill germs in the food and also to break down the food. The stomach churns the food and turns it into a thick liquidy paste. After food leaves the stomach, it goes into the small intestine. Three more digestive juices mix with the food in the small intestine. The intestinal juice which is produced in the small intestine, the bile which is produced by the liver and the pancreatic juice which is produced by the pancreas. The useful substances get absorbed into the blood and go to the liver. The liver checks the blood and removes harmful material from the blood. The leftover food goes into the large intestine. Water from the food is absorbed into the blood here. The remaining solid waste is passed out through the anus. 